My experience with Final Fantasy VIII was a weird one. I started off absolutely hating the game, but as I went through it, it was just a roller coaster of highs and lows that in the end averaged out to pretty good. And one of the aspects that I initially hated but slowly started to grow an appreciation for was the villain, Ultimecia. Ultimecia is a sorceress from the future. She took over the world and rules with an iron fist, but she knows that one day she's destined to be slain by a mercenary from the Seed program. As a result, she appropriates a machine that allows her to transfer her consciousness into the past and possess a sorceress from that era, a sorceress named Adia. She took control of the military superpower Galbadia in an attempt to use its resources to wipe Seed off the face of the Earth all the while continuing her grand plan to send her consciousness further into the past, so with the power of three sorceresses in the past, present, and future, she can compress time into a single moment for... some reason. Yeah, if you're looking for a villain with a clear and interesting motivation, you're not gonna find one here. Well, I mean, that's only partially true. Early on in the game, she makes it pretty clear that a big part of her goal is to avenge the persecution sorceresses have faced. But what does that have to do with time travel shenanigans and time compression? And yeah, that was admittedly one of the big reasons why I kind of disliked her as a villain at first, but over time, she really kind of grew on me for one reason. She is without a doubt one of the most terrifying villains in the entire franchise. Every scene she's in is drenched with this dark, horrifying atmosphere. Anytime she enters the scene, the temperature drops like 5 degrees. There's a scene late in the game where she possesses Renella in one of the most unsettling scenes in the entire series. And when she's inhabiting the body of Adia, she gets up to some pretty nasty stuff. The scene where she first takes over Galbadia is a pretty good example of how scary she is. After she effortlessly immobilizes Ornoa in the middle of her poorly thought out attempt to depower her, she proceeds to the podium where the president is, murders him right in front of the cheering crowd, then she uses her powers to keep them in a cheering trance while she delivers an absolutely scathing acceptance speech, in which she condemns them for cheering her on while they persecuted sorceresses in the past. In spite of all this going for her, it's kind of hard to take her seriously once we see her true form. I mean, just look at her. She just looks so incredibly silly with those pointless wings, that exaggerated plunging neckline, those hair horns. Her design makes Queen Anadala look subtle by comparison, which is a real shame because she spends most of the game possessing Idea, and Idea's design is absolutely perfect. However, her design issues are swiftly forgotten when she actually takes on the heroes personally, and in my opinion, she gives us the best final boss in the entire series. She goes through multiple different forms and creates a demonic beast from the repressed insecurity and self-loathing of the main character, merging with it and then becoming an absolutely horrifying final form. The battle gets especially interesting when you consider that not only do your overpowered summons not work on her, but she has the power to destroy spells right out of your inventory. This sets the player on edge the entire fight without making it unfair, which is something I can appreciate in the final fight. So while she is a bit lacking in the backstory and motivation department, leaving most of it up to interpretation, she still manages to be a credible threat that lives up to the build-up and provides some legitimately disturbing moments throughout the game. And you can argue that her backstory being a complete mystery only adds to her terror, so in any case, she earns her spot on the list. 